I am Jeff, and we wanted to just kind of cut in here and give you a, a quick five minute update on what we're doing here today in the kitchen here in this tiny kitchen remodel. So let me kind of uh, turn the camera around here for you and give you a better view of what's going on. Hope you guys are having a great, productive Wednesday today. So as you recall, we tore down this entire wall of cabinets. There was a row of upper cabinets right here. And then we took took out the base cabinets that were here and of course pulled out the stove there. And what's up there, Mr. Tyler? So what we did then was we found behind the cabinets, they had cement, cementitious backer board, kind of like door rock, which you see lying there on the floor. We just got done pulling this out and we used my uh, Ryobi cutoff tool here. So if you remember, we did a tool review video on this one here, and I'll put a link to that down in the description below so you can see that video. What's up, Rowan? And so uh, we pulled down the, the whole section of this cementitious board from behind it. And so this is what we found. And isn't this so typical, folks, that you see the construction people always throw all their garbage and stuff inside the walls? So we found, you know, beer cans and God knows what other cans in there and stuff. And um, one thing that I've noticed here, which is very typical, is they have cast iron pipe here, see? And this is their vent stack. And this is common for the houses that were built here in the back in the 40s. And nerdy Mr. A says, making progress. Yep. So I'm here with my um, electrician friend Joe today, and we're kind of taking stock on what we got to do. But, but being able to open up this wall and see everything that's in there, we didn't even know there was a crawl space back there. So that'll give us better access to all of these old conduits. And, um, you know, if you look here, what's, what's strange, there's a lot of rubble we got to clean out. That's the oven lit right there. We're going to redo that and put a new box in and tie it to the studs. And w when we redo the wall around it, it, it will be fine. Let me show you a couple of things I didn't like here. This is one thing. This is a major no-no right here. I got this copper pipe here going right by that cast iron. And if you guys know anything about metallurgy, um, having two dissimilar metals touching is not a good thing. You're going to get a lot of corrosion in there. In fact, I'm looking at some of these corners here. I might even replace some of these pieces here with, with newer ones. And what was funny here is the previous sink was, was right here and it ended. The cabinet ended here. So the hot water was here. And the cold water was actually in the cabinet next to the sink cabinet, which was really strange there. So we're going to reroute this. We're going to move this hot water pipe over to this side of the stack where it belongs. And then this cold water pipe, we have to extend it over into here because, see, here's our dividing line. The new sink is going to go right here. There's our dividing line. And we got to make sure that this pipe here ends up inside that sink. These are a lot of the things that you're going to run into when you're remodeling you know, your kitchens and stuff. You never know what you're going to see. You're never going to know what strange things were done and that, that you have to um, either kind of redo and bring it up to modern code. And so you can see they've played games over the years with what, what are they going to do with the different outlets. And they actually stole this outlet to use for the refrigerator. We're going to put in a dedicated one here for the refrigerator and probably just seal up all of those there. And then we have to, this house has never had a, a dishwasher. So let me show you what it's gonna look like. You remember I showed you this drawing the other day? So this house has never had a dishwasher and it's got a 20 inch stove right now. And by the way, guys, I was checking last night, like Lowe's is back ordered until April. I think Home Depot until May and June and Costco even until May. So we can't even get a, um, this 18 inch dishwasher here but we are at least switching to a regular sized stove that was our main goal here but to do that you can see what has to happen this outlet's going to come over here because the new stove is going to come to here right we got to move this outlet to right here and um, put a switch on there for a garbage disposal and then an outlet for a garbage disposal and an outlet for a dishwasher so that we, we have like five circuits that we have to add into the box for this here. Oh, and Nerdy Mr. A says, what software do you use for the drawing renderings? Well, I haven't gotten any yet. I'm gonna, I wanna get this same software. This is done at JK Cabinets where I go for, I sit down with my girl there and uh, I, I bring in all the dimensions that I've taken of the walls and the heights. 
and everything and they plan it out on their software so they know all the, the software knows all of the rules of where the cabinet can go and what size you need whether you need a spacer and see like right here we're putting a two inch spacer in there so it handles all of that and it gives you a great rendition let me see if i have the 3d rendition over here i don't even know where let's see what we got here oh. we're actually going to do a video on how to deal how to work with cabinet companies see so this is this is what I walk in there with. I, I make up this on PowerPoint. I do this. Kind of gives you a, a rough guesstimate of all of the dimensions in the room there, right? And then um, I'm trying to see that. I don't I don't find my drawing that has the rendition. I, maybe I didn't bring it. I don't I don't think I have it here. But yeah, it's it's great when you can sit down with them and she cranks this out in like 20 minutes, 15 20 minutes. And let's see, it says, I hate standalone spacers right next to dishwashers. Yep, they are kind of a pain, but remember the cabinet is going to rest on top of, not the cabinet, the granite will rest on top of this piece. So once the granite guys come in, we will come in, but we may even add a, a panel wall that goes, we've done that before too. <clears throat> that gives you a little more stability on those pieces as well. So I think we might be doing something similar to that. And let's see. So you can see what, what's going to be happening here. So we have to <clears throat> we have to move this outlet. has to move to like right over to here. So here's our 18 inches for the dishwasher. It's got to go there. This outlet will probably kind of stay there because that's the space where the refrigerator is going to go. And yeah, we got to add two outlets down there. And since we're adding cabinets onto this other wall over here now, and you can see the drawing back there, we're going to add another outlet over the, the counter here. See, all these walls are, well, this one might be some kind of a plaster board over the exterior wall, because this is the exterior wall here. And so we've been slowly bringing in all of our gear. You guys recognize, of course, the gorilla. And... Uh, so that's pretty much where we're at today. Oh, and one other thing we found too, when we pulled down the upper cabinets, we found that this soffit is fake. There's no air conditioning ducting or anything. There's no pipes, there's nothing up in there. So I'm just waiting to hear back from our cabinet people right now as to <clears throat> if she can find a, a, the next size up cabinet, you know, we can make them longer now. So I think that we're gonna try that route there. And I don't know if we can see this. I'm going to zoom in up in there into the wood. See, that's tongue and groove wood up there on the bottom of the... That's the roof, actually. So these houses were built with no insulation. They were built on the cheap. Back in 1946 is when this house was built. A lot of houses in this area were built for the veterans back in the back in the day, back in 1946. And that's how they, they did all these here. All right, so let me see if we got any other good questions. Oh, really short video when I saw I was near the end and i realized i was watching live yeah so this is a live one here and so there you have it that's that's what it looks like so we have a lot of work to do over the the next few days sometimes what you think is going to be something simple ends up being just a lot more stuff you know i don't know how they you know what the codes were back in the day there with all of these but you know there's a lot of stuff here tied together that i i don't think really should be and we're going to be uh separating it and did you ever get the DeWalt table saw, says Utah Trucker? Yeah, uh, I've been looking for it. It's been out of stock in our area. I have to try the Deerfield store to see if they have that. Because I've got my gift card in my wallet that's waiting to go be spent. And yeah, Nerdy Mr. A says, yeah, I thought something would run through those soffits. Me too. I think the reason why they did that, and what's really strange is there's not one on the other side. So why would you have one side of the kitchen full height? and then chop down the height of the other side of the kitchen. I think they did it to make, to put cheaper cabinets in, to put the shorter, cheaper cabinets. Cause you can see that the line there, that's sort of like where the upper cabinets were, you know? And then the other thing is, see, this is a cement block wall. These guys put furring strips on here and they screw the cabinets into these. The problem with that is that it makes your cabinets stick out of the wall an inch. So there was big one inch gaps all the way around the bottom of the cabinet. So we're going to be doing away with that. And we are going to be using these special anchors that I'm going to show you right here. These are, these are red hat. I think, are they, are they red hat, redheads? 
And so what these are is you drill a hole deep into the cement block there, and then you start tightening it with a ratchet, with a socket, and then it flares up. You see how on the left side here, you can see how there, there's like seams there, and those will flare out, and that's how it grabs into the wall. And we'll do one of these on in the middle of each cabinet, and then we'll do two tap cons on either side. I'd rather not rely solely on tap cons because we don't know how strong the cement block is. I dealt with this at my friend Al's house that's in this area too, built in 1946. We did that three years ago and it gets really brittle and you start drilling even as if you go in perfect and straight with a nice concrete bit and when you go to stick your tap con in, sometimes they can pull right back out because they, they it's like disintegrating the concrete block as it's screwing into it. So that can be a problem too. So that's why anytime I'm hanging cabinets on a cement block wall like this, I always want to use at least one of these on every, um, every one of the cabinets. And I don't care if people think, well, that looks ugly. It's going to be way up high on the, on the mounting strip on the back, way up high inside the cabinet where you're really not going to see it ever. I mean, it, it's, 100% of the time, pretty much, you know. Yep, more cabinet storage is key. And I actually wanted to put a pantry unit here, but my friend Tina, the owner, thought it would make the kitchen look too kind of crowded. And the pantry unit sticks out. But let me tell you, that offers a lot of storage. And all the drawers in it, they're full, 100% come all the way out in soft clothes. And see, this is an eat-in kitchen, so they're going to have the table, you know, like right over here. And then let me just show you what we did here. We got the cabinets. Here's the base cabinets. I was able to get the whole thing out with the sink out in one piece. So we're gonna put these on Craigslist because we don't like to throw stuff like this into the landfill. We'll probably get a hundred bucks for all of these cabinets because they're still in good shape. I'm gonna clean them off. I'll put them on Craigslist and there's always somebody that wants something dirty and cheap for their garage or for a mobile home or you know, sometimes a, slam, a slumlord will come and buy it. We'll probably list this because I heard these things are so hard to find now that you know people will just recondition it. So there you go. So, oh, Rhonda, yeah, Max says my 16-inch dishwasher is smaller than that one. Man, I, it, it's like when it gets to that size, you might as, well, might as well just wash them by hand. I mean, how many can you fit in there in a 16-inch dishwasher? Holy cow. And Ted says, great job, Jeff. Got to go working on a tiny kitchen myself. Yep. So, yeah, we're going to head out, and I just wanted to give you that update. And as we're working on tearing more of this stuff out and running more of the wiring, we'll update you later on. The challenge for us guys is going to be drilling square holes in this concrete here to embed the metal uh, things. See, I don't like what they did with these older outlets right here in the, these mud rings, and you can't even fit these, these GFCIs in there, you know. So, yeah, the, and this has to get moved over anyway. So we're going to probably use our angle grinder to try to start cutting into it and then chiseling away to get our square holes and then we'll mortar them in place. And that's that for that. We can't fix everything here, folks. We can't do anything with this cast iron stack. That's going to have to remain probably another 30 years. That'll be somebody else's task. But there you have it, folks. So, hey, listen, thanks so much for, for joining us today here. Hope you found this informational and you know every time we open up a wall we never know what we're gonna find folks so you're looking at it right here we got our work cut out for us and we're gonna make a nice video of this whole remodeling process when we're done there and why it says you could hang the cabinets on the furring strip and put a piece of trim around the cabinets yeah we could do that too um, I, I think it's just easier since you have that flat brick wall there to go ahead and mount them right onto it and and it's, it's really not that much different than, you know, finding studs and drilling through the studs there. So if you have any co any questions that didn't get answered, folks, just make sure you leave it in the comments below after the video uploads, and we'll answer it later when we get back. Oh, yes. And um, somebody asked, did you get the new car? We did. That old SUV is gone. Uh, I, got a, I was waiting for a sunny day like it is today. I'm going to take a picture of it and post it on our community tab. And then you guys know we have that other channel carbuyingtips.com here on YouTube. And I'll put a link to that in the, in the video description below. We're gonna do a whole video on that, like how to buy a used car, how to negotiate with the, 
with the uh, dealers and all that, that that will be very helpful for you as well. So thank you so much, folks. You guys have a great productive day, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye. Awesome. Man, that was great.